So God created everything else. Man, he creates from, from the dust of the earth. And you'll, you'll notice that science confirms this, that, um, and this is one of the things I love about the Bible, every time it, it makes a statement, uh, science can back it up. There's nothing contradictory science-wise uh, in the Bible. That the chemicals and, the, and the, the minerals that make up our body are found in the ground, just like God had said, okay? And in verse 8, it, this is life in the garden now, okay? So we're backed up a little bit, and it says, um, the Lord God, notice how this is the third reference or the fourth reference here to the Lord God. See that progressive revelation here we have. The Lord God planted a garden eastward in Eden, and th there he put the man, okay, whom he had formed. Out of the ground, the Lord God made every tree grow that is pleasant to the sight and good for food. And the tree of life was also in the midst of the garden and the tree of knowledge of good and evil. All right? So we got a couple of trees here in the garden that are being highlighted. It was obviously full of all kinds of trees, but here he's highlighting that the tree of life was in the midst of the garden and the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. Okay? These contrasts, and you'll find out as you, as you study your Bible, that you'll, you'll see uh, God uses contrast to, to teach uh, a lot. <laughs> he uses polemics uh, to teach. He uses uh, uh, antithetical type of things. You know, uh, the wise man is like this, the fool is like that. You'll, you'll find that God uses uh, natural things, events, history, um, events, all of these things, God uses a myriad of things to, to teach, but they're usually, you'll find some contrast, in it, and a lot of times it comes in pairs, okay? It says, now a river went out of Eden to water the garden. From there it parted and became riverheads. Remember, this is all pre-curse, pre pre-flood, so things have probably definitely changed uh, on, on the scene. And it says, verse 11, the name of the first is Pishon, and it is on the skirts of the whole land of Havala, where there is gold. And I don't go looking for it because it, it probably doesn't exist anymore, and we certainly don't have a reference to it, but I think we can be certain it's somewhere in the Middle, Re Middle East region, probably around the uh, Fertile Crescent, Iraq, Iran, that general area where uh, civilization began, okay? Because it talks about this, this uh, God planted a garden east of Eden. Now, if, if the garden conceptually, okay, is uh, the, that fertile crescent we were just talking about, east of that would uh, west, okay, because it's east of Eden. So uh, Eden would be west of the garden, which would probably put it in Israel proper. Um, that's just some conjecture. We just throw it out there if you're just wondering. It's not really uh, too important to get dogmatic about that type of thing. So, but anyway, this probably meant a little bit more to the original audience who might have understood where some of these uh, locations were. And it says, and the gold of that land is good. Bedlam and the onyx stone are there. The name of the second river is the Gehon, and it is the one which goes around the whole land of Cush. Now, Cush is probably more better understood as like northern uh, Africa today, all right? And by the time we get over into the genealogy of the nations, uh, further up in like Genesis, uh, you know, 11, uh, that area, you will, these things will become a little more apparent, a little more important. We'll get to that when we get there. And it says the name of the third river is the Hidekel, and it is the one which goes towards east of Assyria. And the fourth is the river Euphrates. Now, east of Assyria, Assyria is, is the region basically today, modern day Syria, northern Iraq, Iran, and uh, the area of uh, Turkey 
today would be the uh, uh, Syria. So it's saying in the fourth is the river Euphrates. Everybody knows what that one is. In verse 15, it says, Then the Lord God took the man and put him in the garden to tend it and to keep it. So God makes man and he puts him in the garden. This is a perfect environment. Remember, he has dominion. And uh, we could, you know, think of some fanciful uh, things that, you know, maybe he did. What was he doing when he was tending it? You know, if he had dominion, okay, maybe he could just, you know, cause certain things to grow. But he obviously had a job there. And, uh, but anyway, um, here comes the first command. And it says, the Lord God commanded the man, saying, of every tree of the garden, you may freely eat, but of the tree of knowledge, of good and evil, you shall not eat. For in the day that you eat of it, you shall surely die. Now, notice that this is before Eve has been uh, formed. So God is giving one command, okay? to Adam and he's telling him every tree in the garden and I bet you this garden was big but he says of the tree and he's giving him one prohibition now this brings up the the concept of of free will now God when he made uh, the heavens and the earth and all that is in them angels and men okay mankind men and women uh, we have free will. We're able to choose, but if we don't have a choice, okay, if, if God doesn't give us a prohibition, all right, then, then there's no way to uh, measure our um, faithfulness, okay? So, so God puts a one, just one prohibition here, one commandment on man. And he gives him that command of the tree of the garden, you may freely eat every tree, but of the tree of knowledge of good and evil, you shall not eat for in the day of it, you eat of it, you shall surely die. Now, God tells him this not to, you know, like, like he's holding back because this is the way um, it's presented sometimes is that that tree of knowledge, that esoteric knowledge, uh, Gnosticism in uh, uh, a lot of forms of, of New Age uh, witchcraft and all types of uh, esoteric knowledge that is out there, um, it's packaged as, um, you know, that, that good knowledge. And, and, and God, in his prohibition, in his command on that, was saying, hey, don't touch that because you're going to die. Not that he was looking for an excuse to punish, but he'd had to give man free will to choose him, right? If we were, to, you know, getting married and, um, you know, the person didn't want to marry us, um, where's the love?